All right, in this first session we're going to talk about face milling and the first thing we want to do is right click and select top and make sure that we got our construction plane set to 2D. You can toggle that back and forth, make sure that it's set to 2D. Then also make sure that the Z depth is set to zero. So anything we draw is going to be drawn on a Z zero plane. Now, if you don't see the crosshair, you can go to view and select show axis. So you can turn that on and off right there, or you can just hit the F9 button to toggle that on and off. From the wireframe menu, we're going to select rectangle. We're going to select that little arrow and select rectangular shapes. We're going to make sure that rectangular is highlighted, base point. We're going to set the origin at the upper left hand corner. We're going to make the length or the width six inches. We're going to hit the tab key and then the width four inches. Then all we do is let our cursor snap to the origin or that intersection of our crosshairs and it anchors right there. Then we click OK and we have our rectangle. Now that we have our rectangle, we select the machine tab. We select the default milling machine and we're going to right click next to the red arrow, hover over mill tool paths and then select face. And the prompt tells us select face chain one. So chain is highlighted. So we select the chain and click OK. That brings up the menu with all the parameters and it starts with tool path type which is set the facing. Tool, there are no tools in our tool library so we're going to select the tool. Now it, all it shows is end mills so we're going to select filter, click on face mill and deselect end mill. So when we click OK, it should only show face mills. So we're going to select a 2 inch face mill and click OK. So that brings it into our library. Now that is tool number 322. So we're going to double click on that. It opens up the menu where we can make some changes to the description and the size. So all this looks good on the first page. Then next, this is where we change our tool number. So we can make this tool number 20 and hit enter. Now notice that the description is a two inch face mill. So all we have to do is click finish. So the next thing we do is make sure that the feet and speeds are correct. So we're going to enter 1250 RPM in the spindle speed. We're going to move at 25 inches a minute on the feed rate and we're going to plunge at 50 inches and we're just going to put a comment face okay so then the next thing we do is go to cut parameters and we have several options here under this menu right here we can either zigzag one way one pass or dynamic and we're going to start with one way okay we're going to leave all these numbers the way they default but we're going to change this to zero then the next thing we do is we'll go to linking parameters. We want to make sure that everything is set to absolute. We want our retract set to one inch. We want our feed plane to 0.1. Top of stock, let's say that we only have 15 thousands to take off and our final Z depth is zero. Okay, then all we do is click on coolant, turn it on and that is the minimum you're going to need to do a facing operation. So let's see what the tool paths look like, just letting everything pretty much default out. So we click the OK button and notice we have three passes. Now we're going to select the back plot button and you can drag this out of the way. You can also zoom out a little bit to make sure you see everything. And this button here speeds up and slows down the simulation. So we can click play and it's coming down in Z and we can definitely speed that up a little bit. 
So there's one pass. Now notice you have a little overhang. It jumps up, comes over, gets ready for the next pass, and the last pass defaults out. Without jumping up, it makes a pass coming back, making sure that it pushes the burrs back onto the part. Now if we rewind this again, and we turn on Quick Verify, that you can actually see the tool paths and make sure that you have enough coverage. So you can always do this when you are back plotting your tool paths. Make sure that you turn on your verify so you can exactly see where your tool has been. Then also you can right click and click on isometric view and I'll go ahead and turn off the quick verify. But now you can also see how far it's jumping up between toolpaths. Now the yellow represents the rapid moves and that's turned on by this center button right here, display rapid moves. So you can either turn those on or off. Okay. All right, let's take a closer look at the parameters. All right, so to get back into the parameters, we click OK out of back plot and click on parameters. Okay. Then we go to cut parameters and that's where we select it one way. So let's for instance just select zigzag, do nothing else, click OK. We're going to right click and top and let's just see what the software does for us. Now because I made a change the operation is dirty and it's dirty because of that red X. It's saying you made a change, you have to regenerate so you can either hit regenerate all dirty operations or regenerate all selected. One of the two. So we've regenerated. You can see a preview of the tool paths. We click back plot and the software is automatically creating a tool path for you. Now it's doing this in four passes to make sure that the last pass is a pass where it pushes the burr back onto the part. Now if you don't care about pushing the burrs back onto the part and you just want to do this in the minimal amount of time, then we can just unclick even number of passes, click OK, regenerate and notice it takes one on the outside, zigzags to the center and then comes back on the outside and done. So that is one pass if we're just taking very little just to expose the part. Let's talk about depth of cut. Let's say that you have a quarter inch to remove. You want to take a hundred thousands at a time and then leave fifteen thousands for a finish pass. Let's talk about how that's done. So we go back into parameters then we select depth of cut and there is no information in here right now. So what we want to tell the software is don't take more than a hundred thousandths per pass or depth of cut per pass. And then we're going to leave fifteen thousandths and we're going to make one pass, one finish cut, taking fifteen thousandths so that's a nice smooth finish. Okay. Then the next thing we need to do in linking parameters, top of stock, we had set to 15 thousandths. Let's tell the software that we have 250 thousandths of material to take off and we want to take it off all the way down to zero. Okay, now if the top of stock is 250 excess, then we need to make sure that the feed plane is larger than 0.1. So let's make that a half an inch. Okay, now let's see what that looks like. Click OK. Regen dirty operations. Now you can tell looking in from the top view that we have multiple passes. So we're going to select isometric and now you can see we're taking multiple depth of cut. So let's back plot that. Slow that down a little bit. We're taking a pass at 171 right here on your lower left hand corner of the screen. The next one is at Z0933.
and then 15 thousands so we're going to make one pass where it just takes 15 thousands to make a nice finish pass so that's at z0 okay so now notice it the software took that 250 thousands excess subtracted 15 thousands for a finish pass and took the leftovers and divided it up into three depth of cut no more than a hundred thousand so if you want to only take a couple of passes then you will have to increase the depth of cut let's say 250 so just by doing that regen now notice it's only going to take two passes so that first pass let's take a look at that c value at the lower left hand corner of the screen it's 132 so it's roughly taken 120 thousands that one pass and it, the next pass is at 15 above so it takes another almost a eighth of an inch per pass which that tool should be able to handle that depending on the material that the, that you're machining all right so at that point you're ready to post all right so to post your operation make sure that you have a check mark in that little folder next to your facing operation and then click on g1 now g1 when you hover over it it says post selected operations click on it it opens up this little menu here make sure you have a check mark in nc file and a check mark in edit then click ok then give it a name and it's going to default in a folder that is inside mastercam mill in nc all right or you can from here select a folder in any location where you would want to save that program then we click on save if a program with that name already exists in the folder and you it's okay to overwrite and click yes if not then change the name or change the location of that folder and click yes so the program opens up in the default mastercam editor and we start with a program number and let's just make it program number one there is the name that we gave it face milling and it gives you the date and some other information and you can either keep that or delete it then it gives you a description of your tool a g20 to put the program in inch mode then a safety line and then there is that face comment that we put in the comment section of the operation now because we selected default mill we also get an a0 now if you now if you don't want that a0 then go to the home tab click replace after you highlight a0 then notice it ends up over here find what and replace with and you put nothing in that field and just click replace all then it has found two occurrences and they have been replaced with nothing so that's okay so that's how you get rid of that or you can just manually select them and delete them so that leaves you with a program that's basically taking three passes at z132 and a half so one two three then three passes at fifteen thousands and three passes at z zero now you can see it jumps up to z1 inch in between passes as it's getting ready to take the next pass and then at the end it turns off the spindle homes out in z turns off the coolant and homes out in x and y so this is basically ready to load into your machine so that's it for face milling